This is a different song, so remember to pause until they start the next song, okay? And whenever it says intro, these things, these things, that's when we're the intro. We don't sing. Don't sing unless everyone else is singing. Yeah. If it's just the drama, don't sing. But if it's all it all you can sing. Taking pictures now. Good morning, everybody. If you'll stand with me this morning as we sing.
good morning. You guys can have a seat for just a second if you want to. Hey, uh, I just wanted to say um, there are churches all over the country right now that are wishing, just, just hoping someday they'll have kids in their church. And we got some kids up here singing. Y'all want to show them how much uh, you appreciate this? Uh, this is awesome. I'm telling you. Uh, I was out here this morning and they were, uh, the music crew was practicing and I came out and I thought, hold it, we've got a whole group on stage this morning and so that's awesome. If you want to be a, a part of a, a singing group on stage for our Christmas Eve program this year, see uh, Peter Mamula or Jim Patchell, they're going to fix you up, they're going to have a, uh, 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 some folks up here to help, uh, sort of a, a choir type of um, uh, cantata to go along with our uh, Christmas Eve program this year. So if you are uh, musically inclined and um, and want to be a part of that, these guys really want to talk to you. We've got a lot going on. I want to talk to you a little later about a couple of announcements. But um, for right now, I think it's just a good time for us to sing and, um, and praise God. You want to read for us, Cole? Cole's, he's not just a singer, he's a reader too. So he's going to read for us today. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me up to seven times? All right. Thanks, Cole. It's a good day. Anytime. Yeah, go ahead, man. I'm happy. We need to clap when we have kids who are, uh, have the courage to come up here on stage for sure. Um, so let's stand back up. We're going to pray, and then we're going to praise God. Father, it is a good day. We thank you for the, the beautiful weather we've enjoyed this week. We thank you for our health that we can come out here. God, you're good to us. You bless us. It's a blessing to see young hearts up here praising God. And so we thank you for that this morning. I pray that all of us will open our hearts and our minds to you and your word this morning, that we will leave here joyful and, um, and just full of the hope that you give us through your son and his resurrection. We pray these things in his holy name. Amen.
Well, good morning, church family. What an amazing quartet we had up here. Isn't that wonderful? And the backup singers, the vocalists, wasn't too bad either. <laughs> uh, well, as we <clears throat> turn our hearts and our minds towards communion uh, this morning, I have some scripture that I would like to read. There in the, the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 13, uh, beginning uh, with verse 8. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I, talk, uh, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love. We're gathered here this morning as we prepare to take this communion. We are in awe of the greatest act of love that mankind has ever known. When our Lord and Savior hung upon that cross at Calvary, he died because he loved you and I all of his creation. The uh, only thing that he asked in return is for you to love him with your heart, your soul, and your mind. And to love one another. So as we prepare to come around the Lord's table this morning, remember what a great sacrifice was made, the greatest of sacrifices, and what a small thing we have to do in order, in order to earn the salvation that Christ paid for. Would you bow your heads? Lord God Almighty, we, we are, we are so thankful to be a child of God. We're so thankful that you've given us that opportunity, that right, Father. It's up to us to reach out and take hold of it and fulfill what you would have in mind for us. Lord, we just ask that we be reminded that this communion that we take this morning, it represents our Christ body as it hung upon that cruel cross of Calvary. And this cup that we drink represents his shed blood that covers all of our sins. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
I'm going to do a little housekeeping up here. I've had a, uh, I don't think I can preach with this uh, music stand like it is right now, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little change and, uh, right quick. I'm going to move this microphone. I'll tell you what, I am not complaining. Having kids up here, that's exciting stuff, and, um, but uh, I have enough troubles uh, the way I am, and so I'm going to move this really quick, and um, be a lot better off for sure. All right, now we're good. Hey, uh, we do have a lot of things going on as our men uh, pass our offering trays. Just want to bring up speed on a couple of things. <clears throat> um, today at 5 o'clock, our junior high group, 6th through ninth grade, is going to be here packing uh, boxes. For the, their shoe boxes that we're going to be sending to Haiti uh, for Christmas. We do that, uh, we've done that several years now. And um, Really appreciate all of you who have donated supplies or given money for the shipping for those boxes. Uh, it's really good. We got uh, just about everything we need. I know I got a couple more things coming today, and so we've got some uh, we've got some kids coming. Parents are welcome to stay and help as well, and um, and so that's a good thing. We're going to get those packed. We'll take those to Jackson, Mississippi, in a couple of weeks, and then they'll get uh, taken to. Miami, where they're loaded onto a container, um, put on a ship, and taken to Haiti. It's a process to get these things to Haiti, and they have to uh, go through customs there. They get them out to all the to the to the uh, to the orphanage that we support over there with our friend Jumi Septembre, and then they take them out to the villages and the schools and give these things out. Last year, I think they gave out about 2,800 um, shoe boxes. To a lot of kids, and um, and we just have to remember that is their Christmas. That's what they get, and so um, and so I'm excited today to have these junior high kids help, and and uh, hopefully it's going to help them realize that uh, we're pretty blessed here uh, where we are for sure. Um, mention the the uh, music for Christmas Eve if you're interested in that. See Peter or Jim. And, and then uh, something that's just really uh, big is, um, is next Sunday evening. Uh, Sunday, next Sunday afternoon, 3 to 5 here, we're going to have our fall festival. Uh, trunk or treat? We, um, I didn't even do a sign-up sheet this year because usually what happens is I get about 10 signed up and I worry, okay, and I think, what are we going to do? And then we have a lot more show up for trunks. So bring out your vehicle, decorate them up, Kids are going to come through, give them candy. It's just a really fun afternoon. We're going to have hot dogs, chips, and uh, and and water to just give away to you if you want to. If you want something to eat, <clears throat> we're going to have dessert, inflatable, and just all kinds of stuff out here to uh, to have fun with. We've got our playground out there that the kids love to play play on, and so. Um, it's just going to be a fun day. Last year it rained. I haven't looked at the weather forecast. I don't know. Last year it rained. Uh, just a, a came a, a downpour the day of our uh, festival, and and I said, well, we're just going to move it inside, make the best out of it. It was one of my most memorable festivals we've ever had. We we had 23 uh, trunks, I guess you would say. Um, I couldn't find enough tables in this building to have all to house all the trunks that we had. It was fun. You guys stepped up and did a great job, and we want you to do that again this year. This time, so now, kiddos, you know that next Sunday is a big day. We're gonna uh, watch our social media. We'll send you a text or two this week to tell you if we need anything for that. But uh, just make plans to decorate up those trunks and come out and have fun next Sunday. Kids, head on back. We appreciate those who are back there teaching our kids today. They're doing a great job. I think um, just the fact that we have kids who are, are courageous enough to get up here on stage and, and sing is a testament to our youth group and uh, what they're doing back there. And so we really appreciate them. If you would like to make that your ministry to help teach back there on Sundays, be sure and see uh, Robin, and she'll fix you up for sure. If you have your bulletin this morning, my outline is on the front there. You can turn ahead to where I'm going to be reading. It's um, <clears throat> the second part of a series that we're talking about this month. When I was a boy, 
there was a comedian on TV, and, and, and I don't really, really remember much about it. I was going to YouTube it this week, and I just decided it really didn't matter. But uh, there was a comedian on TV who made popular a phrase, the devil made me do it. Remember that? His name was Flip Wilson. And that's all I remember about the whole thing. I don't remember anything about it. But somehow, somewhere in the middle of the country where I lived, I came up with an iron-on patch that had the, the devil in his little red suit holding, and with his horns holding a little pitchfork and the saying on there, the devil made me do it. And so I heated up the iron, melted that thing to the back pocket of my tough skins, and wore them to church. Hmm? And the Sunday school teacher didn't like it. And I remember this, I, I can remember this just like it was this morning. She brought me out of Sunday school by the arm and showed that the, the adults sat out in the sanctuary. They had one class out there. The preacher was standing up there teaching Sunday school. And she brought me out in front of them and showed this like, I had to turn around and do that to my dad. I thought it was a good look. He didn't, okay? And I learned at a young age a hard lesson in what happens when the devil sows seeds of, of judgment in errors, or errors in judgment, right? Poor judgment. I learned at a young age what happens when the devil says, Oh, this is good, okay? And, and, and you should do this because everybody else is doing it. It'll be fun. It wasn't fun, okay? We're in the middle of a month that ends with Halloween. And I told you last week that I am not a fan of Halloween. I don't like scary. I like candy. But I don't like scary stuff to get candy. And at the same time, as a preacher, I don't boycott Halloween. I don't claim that it's going to ruin the lives of our children. Halloween can be fun. We're going to have a safe and fun Halloween trunk or treat next Sunday. Still, there's this, this really creepy side of, of celebrating evil that we need to be cautious about. I really believe that. I think there, that there is this, this sinister side of just celebrating evil that we as followers of Jesus need to be cautious about. When Jesus prayed his model prayer, he said some things that we really like to think about. Give us our, give us our daily bread. Um, uh, deliver, uh, don't lead us into temptation. And he wraps it up with deliver us from the evil one. Deliver us from evil. And, and a lot of times I think that maybe we just kind of take that for granted. Oh, I'm going to follow Jesus. He's going to keep me from harm. He's going to keep me from evil. But I think this is something we need to pray and it's something we need to focus on. Last week we talked about how the evil one is all around us. He's disguised. He's scheming. But he is all around us. Today I want to look at how he tries to ruin the good things in our lives, Okay. And so first thing, the, the seeds Satan sows will sabotage. Say that three times really fast. Do it, go ahead, you're wanting to so bad. The seeds Satan sows will sabotage. I grew up on a farm, okay? And, uh, and I learned the importance of good seed at a, at a young age. That was taught to me on the farm. You, you plant good seed because if you don't start with good seed, you're not going to finish with good seed. One year, we planted the rice. The rice started coming up, and it was just shimmering out there in the sunlight early in the morning. You could barely see a little green fuzz out there on the ground. And so it was time for us to do the survey and put up the levees, and we did. And, um, <clears throat> and the way this worked is we would build the levees, and then right before the last pass, we would put seed in a, in a little hopper, and it would put seed out on the levees and cover it up. And so my dad told one of the workers there to go to the barn, and, um, and his name was Marvin. I remember this guy really well. Marvin, um, he said, Marvin, go to the barn, and there's a pallet there with, with long grain rice seed on it. Put that in the, in the hopper, and, and we're going to put that on, on the levees. And I don't know if Marvin was 
was not good at listening or not very smart or just didn't care. But Marvin, instead of going to the pallet with the long grain rye seed, he went over to a bin that had medium grain rye seed, okay? And we put it on all the levees. And then later, a few days later, my dad came back and said, hold it, I thought there's still rice on this pallet. What happened? Marvin told him what happened. We couldn't undo what had been done. The, the seed had been sown, and we had to wait until harvest and harvest all the levees separate from the rest of the field. Big mess. Jesus told parables to keep li listeners to help listeners understand his message, okay? And so I want to read one of those parables today in Matthew chapter 13, starting in verse 24. It says, Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the, the weeds come from? And an, an enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, First collect the weeds, and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it to my barn. Notice here, this is a kingdom parable. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is like, and so he's talking about uh, the, the kingdom of God and what's going to happen in the end. The, fa the farmer here did his job. He took care of the, he, he worked ground the way it was supposed to be done. He took care to do it just right. <clears throat> he planted good seed. And he had faith that it was going to sprout, and it was going to grow, and it was going to produce more seed. But then something happened. Something really sinister happened here. It was evil. While, while the farmer and all his workers were sleeping and getting rest for another day of work, the enemy came in and sowed evil seeds in a pure field. And so the workers were caught by surprise here, and they wanted to do something drastic, but the farmer said, no. He just assured them, hey, let the good seeds grow and let the, the bad seeds grow, and they're going to be separated at the time of the harvest. God created the world as a pure field, okay? It, it was just right. Everything was just right. The first seeds were sown, and they were really good. God tells us that his creation, everything was good. But it didn't take long for the enemy to corrupt with, with evil. And so as we read this story of bad seeds being planted in a good field, I don't think we can help but think that the, about the evil that is, is being sown into God's creation today. Satan is a, manipula a, a manipulator, and I'm just going to tell you, because the Bible tells us, Satan is a liar. That's what it says, Satan is a liar, describing the devil. Jesus said in John 8, uh, chapter 8, verse 44, he was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is what? A liar and the father of lies. That's pretty stout right there. Jesus said, well, he's a murderer to start with. He doesn't hold to the truth. There is no truth. He lies. Every time he opens his mouth, he lies. In fact, he is the, the father of lies. Satan loves to plant seeds of doubt and fear. He loves to, to plant the seed of, I, I, I think one of the, the, the harms in our world today, the, the seed that Satan plants is the seed of immediate gratification. You know, we live in a world where we're not very patient anymore. We love drive throughs mm, We love, why buy something? Uh, we, we, we download things now instead of ordering something and getting it in the mail. We'd rather just download it, and that way we have it immediately. We love immediate gratification. The lack of patience 
causes us to settle for a lot less than we were made for. All right? I believe that. The lack of patience causes us to settle for, for okay when there is really, really good out there somewhere. Satan loves to plant the seed of conflict and uh, contention and division. It's all around us today. Conflict is everywhere. I'm going to tell you all something you probably hadn't noticed. This is a political year. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, 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 if you haven't, uh, haven't noticed, um, there, there are people campaigning to be elected. Obviously, I'm kidding, but whether it's our community or whether it's nationwide, there is a lot of conflict, a lot of division over things that, over people who are never going to be able to fix what only Jesus can. Okay, let's don't put our hope in fool's gold, all right? Let's put our hope in the one who plants the seed, who works the field and plants the seed. Now, I'm just going to tell you, and I don't say much political out here, and I'm not going to, but I'm just going to tell you, as a, as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus, it is our duty to get out here and, and, and do our work, do our homework, study, and elect the best possible leaders we can whether it's local or national, okay? I believe that with all my heart. If, if we, if the church decides that, that we don't want to participate in all this, then we're just handing it over to the devil. You were created for more and better. The, the, Satan loves to plant the seeds of distraction and busyness. We talked about that last week. If he can't make you bad, he's going to make you busy. He dresses up good and makes it, makes it look really good and it takes our eyes off what is better. You were made for more. Don't settle for good when you can have great. 1 John chapter 5, verse 18 through 20 says, We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who was born of God keeps him safe. The evil one cannot harm them. We know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. We know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true by being, his, uh, by being in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God in eternal life. Notice right up top, that said the the evil one can't harm the ones who who follow their maker. The devil wants to take your mind because once he has your mind, he's going to control your heart. What he wants to do is sow these seeds that will sabotage. Second thing, evil deeds will be the devil's downfall. I believe that. Evil deeds will be the devil's downfall. One of my fun sayings is, is this. I like to say, if I were king of the, for the day. You ever say that? If I were the king of, for the day, and, and then I just, whatever I'm thinking, I just throw it in there. If I were king of the day, I would take the stoplight at Keller's Chapel and throw it in Craighead Forest Lake. I would. If I were king of the day, I would make strawberry cake the official dessert of the state of Arkansas. We could eat it every day. No calories. If I were the king of the day, I'd take the the first two days of March Madness and set them aside as a national holiday where nobody had to work. You just stay home and watch basketball all day. And the reason I would do these things is because I would know my power would be temporary and all these things would be focused on me. Did you notice? I didn't didn't say if if I were king of the day, I would do something to make you better your life better it was all about me and I had to do them in a hurry I only have 24 hours I'd have to do them as quickly as possible the devil's reign and the devil's kingdom is temporary and he is focused solely on himself 
And so everything he does is about him, but he's going to pay for his deeds. Let's read on in our parable here. What happens is Jesus tells this story, he tells another little story, and the, the disciples are standing there thinking, I don't know what he's talking about. Do you know? And they're all just kind of arguing a little bit. And so Jesus explains it in verse 37. He answered, the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of God, of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is... It's the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out the, his kingdom, everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will, be, will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever hear, has ears, let them hear. Jesus' disciples came to him and said, you know what, we don't understand what you're talking about, Jesus. We're a little confused here about this parable you're talking about. And so he told them what each part stood for, the farmer, the field, the seed, the weeds, the enemy. He explained it all right here. He said at harvest time, the good seed and the weeds are going to be separated. Notice it didn't say weed, okay? didn't say the, the devil, all right? The weed, no, he's the enemy. It says weeds. So those who buy into what the, the, the evil, the, the, the Satan is selling and sowing are going to be pulled up and burned right along with their boss. And I'm just going to tell you right here, any joke that you've ever heard about how much hell, fun hell is going to be is pretty much shot down in this passage. Uh, was it Billy Joel that sang, I'd rather laugh with the sinners than cry with the saints because the sinners are a lot more fun? I've told you all before, sin's fun, but you're going to pay for it, all right? Let's get this straight. You might go out here and think everybody else is doing it. The devil made me do it. The devil is the one that's going to burn. And I don't want to be with him. Revelation chapter 20 verse 10 said, And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Does that sound like fun? No. Last week, I challenged you to stand firm. That's a good challenge for today, too. Okay? We're going to stand firm. We see what's going on here. The, the world is, is good. The world is full of good seed. There's a lot of good going on all around us. There are good plants growing all around us. But the devil, the enemy, has sown weeds into this good field. And they're taking over. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. He says, you know what? This is up to you to stand firm. Stand firm. Resist him. You're not the only one. A lot of people are fighting this battle. The weeds are growing all around us. They're trying to distract us. They're trying to, to suck our, 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 our nourishment, our spiritual moisture. They're trying to grab our sunlight. But we've got to stand firm. A.W. Tozer said, The best way to keep the enemy out is to keep Christ in. I love that quote. Hmm? The best way... To, to, to put up a barrier here to keep the enemy out is just to immerse ourselves in Jesus. And so what's our takeaway today? Well, maybe, uh, maybe you look around and you think, wow, I'm trying my best here, but I feel like the weeds are taking over. I, I look at, at what's going on in the world and and, and I don't see a lot of good seed. I see a lot of weeds. I'm just going to tell you, folks, there is good going on everywhere. I sat for a, I probably spent an hour just chasing 
rabbit tra <laughs> running in the rabbit hole videos this week of what's going on still in North Carolina and Eastern Tennessee and Florida and some of the good work that's being done through the church. And I'm just going to tell you, there is good. And we're going to get together this afternoon and we're going to pack some boxes that are going to go to some kids in Haiti who will look, see the, just the love of Jesus when they open those things up. Don't let a few weeds distract you. They're all around us. They might, you may not recognize them for a while. Those weeds that, that start small, maybe you've seen this in your lawn, you have good grass, and, and then all of a sudden you, you realize some of the weeds are growing a little taller than the grass, and by the time you recognize them, they're hard to control. But it's up to you to protect your home and your heart. And it's up to all of us to protect our, our community and our nation and our church. And so we want, that's our challenge for today. We're going to resist the devil. And we're going to stand firm. Stand with me this morning as we prepare to sing. If there's a decision you need to make, come and do it right now. can have a seat yep I want to introduce you this morning to Dustin and Catherine Prentice um, on Easter Sunday they visited with uh, uh, with the Mick family and, um, and came to church and they've been here most every Sunday since I'm just going to tell you they've been uh, fun to, to get to know and um, so this week uh, well last week actually I was we were gone and they were kind of gone but uh, Catherine sent a message and said hey we'd like to talk to you someday and um, and so we went over. Robin and I went over Monday night, and she she's a good cook, and uh, she fixed us some dinner, and she knows how to make me happy. Um, and now it was good, and we just had a great conversation. And so um, uh, just like I always do, I said, "Hey, um, tell us your story," and uh, and they did, and they told us all about uh, um, how. Well, they told told me and Robin that. Um, you know, they just decided it was time to get in church and get involved in church and, and didn't know what to do. And so the mix asked them to come to church and, um, and they just realized that uh, this is what they wanted to do. And so um, we talked about salvation. We talked about Jesus. And today they want to be baptized. And I'm excited about that. This is a good day. They want to be a part of our church family too. But you know, to me, um, man, we're just wanna, we just want to get just... The Jesus part of it is the biggest thing for me. Guys, I enjoyed, I just, want, I just told them, we really enjoyed visiting with them, enjoyed hearing their story, but, um, and I heard them talk uh, from their heart about uh, their, their, just their desire to, to be a part of the family of God, but uh, I just want 
just ask you guys um, real quick. I, I told you I'd make this quick, but could y'all just in the scripture there's a part where Jesus was talking to his his guys there, and he said, "Hey, um, who's everybody say I am?" and 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 they said, "Well, they think maybe you're a, a prophet or or." some of these Old Testament guys, and he said, but who do you say I am? And he kind of put it on them, and, and Peter had an answer that I just love, and I want y'all to kind of repeat that after me, okay? He said, I believe, I believe. You, are the Christ, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, the living God. that saves us from our sin. Do y'all believe that? I, believe. I know you do. Let's pray. Father, it's a great day. We thank you for Dustin and Catherine and their family. Uh, just look forward to watching them grow for sure we look forward to watching them grow in Christ and so today God I thank you that you have given them the courage to, to just uh, ask questions the courage to, to, to come up in front of these, this family and say we want to make a decision here and, and show these people that we're committed to the rest of our lives to be followers I thank you God for uh, the blessings you give us every day thank you for this church and the work we're doing here we may not um, same, sometimes it just seems God like we're not changing the world but we're changing hearts and I love that thank you Father in the name of Jesus Amen. we're going to go get changed um, they're going to they're gonna sing a little bit we've got some other things going on here and as soon as we get changed we'll be up here and, uh, and um, this is exciting Amen Amen alright eyes that see no sin would look on me with love and watch me rise again who am I that the voice that calm the sea would call out through the rain and calm the storm
somebody 